I'm getting some really interesting results with uh, supercapacitors. I'm using unidirectional carbon fiber as my electrodes. They have been heat treated, so it is supposed to improve uh, or increase the surface area and uh, obviously store more charge and increase the capacitance. It allows any fluid to wick along the fibers towards the tips where I attach my crocodile clips. So to block that and prevent my clips from eroding, I've added these two strips of wood with a bit of super glue and uh, it seems to do a pretty decent job of uh, preventing any wicking past this point. I saw this stuff in the hardware store and I thought yeah let's use that as an electrolyte then we can call it a flux capacitor and uh, man what interesting stuff this turned out to be really surprising results. I'll first show you just the basic supercapacitor using nothing but the electrolyte and the two electrodes um, I'm charging from the battery and uh, using the buck converter as a power supply giving me a constant 2 volts and then uh, measuring volts and amps as I charge and then for discharge I've got the choice of using either the small uh, electric motor or a uh, jewel thief that powers an LED Okay, that's my one electrode already in place, and then a separator. And then I add a fairly generous amount of solder flux. Build it up nice and thick. It might actually be better to use a thin layer for the plain supercapacitor, but for the next iteration I want to separate the negative electrode from the additional chemicals. Right, since it was the very first time to charge it up, I gave it a good couple of minutes to settle at that charge. So let's switch it off and see how it holds voltage. It's 1.8, 1.7 volts. Okay, let's try and get power on the motor. You can see it wants to turn, but very, very little charge. Give it another charge. You can see there's a bit of current going in, but it is fractions of a milliamp. Let's see if we can get power on the LED. Okay, charge on the LED, but nothing impressive. Okay, now let me show you the impressive bit. I'm adding a couple of drops of ferric chloride, the same stuff I used on the aluminium air battery. And some aluminium on the positive electrode. Can I look at the voltage? If you put aluminium and carbon together, the carbon will be the positive electrode. So that's why it's pulling the voltage down, because now I'm actually putting it on the wrong electrode. But, if I charge that up, I'm going to let that run for a few seconds. You can feel it's slightly warm. Part of it is the reaction with the ferric chloride, I think. You might hear some bubbling. Okay, that should be rough enough for now.
Now we remove the aluminium. Now you'll notice the charging current is much more than it was before and it also decreases at a much slower rate so it is absorbing a lot more charge. I might have this completely wrong. Maybe this is not a supercapacitor at all. Maybe there's actually some electrochemistry happening in there that uh, would qualify this more as a battery. Either way And the voltage is a little lower. Let's get power on the motor. Start the timer. Okay, already much more impressive than before. Let's give it another charge. Oops. I'm going to let this charge go on for at least two minutes and then I'll come back and uh, we'll do another time running the motor. Right, two minutes coming up. And let's time the run on the motor. That motor will normally keep running until the voltage drops to 0 0.2 volts. I'm going to repeat the exercise with the aluminium strip. This time I'll let that sit and charge for a whole lot longer as well. Let's give that a minute. And if I now continue charging without the aluminium, aluminium strip, look how much current is taking now. So let's give that perhaps another minute. Right, run time of a minute 15. Much better this time. I'm going to stop this at 40 seconds. And just test the LED. Cool, oh, that voltage is hardly moving will shine the LED until it drops down to around 0.6 volts. So yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here. 
Maybe it's a capacitor, maybe it's a battery, maybe a little bit of both. So like I said, add solder flux, ferric chloride and a bit of aluminium and uh, you get some really interesting results. I'm not sure what's going on. If anyone has it, a guess about the actual reactions, feel free to leave a comment and uh, happy tinkering.